you. And also you. Please stand. Let us pray. God, we give you praise, all honor, and glory this day. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who rose from the dead. We pray that we will worship him in spirit and in truth. May the service be given unto your honor and glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
Lord be with you. And also Let us pray together the collect of the day. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we celebrate the joy in the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading from Holy Scripture. A reading from Acts. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, everyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent by the, to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God is with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. We <laughs> read together Psalm 118 responsibly by half verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim. His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory. In the hands of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live. And declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely. But he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you. For you answered me, and I have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. For this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, this is now, and will be forever. Amen.
Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head, the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Let the little children come forward. Good morning, boys and girls. Do you know what today is? Easter. And are you excited for Easter? Yes. Or are you excited about the Easter egg hunt? Easter egg hunt. <laughs> oh, 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 all right. Well, here's the thing. When you get your eggs, you are to bring me one just so that I can ensure that chocolate is in it, okay? Okay. Good. Good deal. All right. Well, how many of you like surprises? Me. Mm. And how many of you have been surprised before? Can you tell me of a time when you were surprised? Yes, Eileen? You don't really remember. Well, that's a surprise. Yes, Evelyn? When you got your Porsche? Purse. Oh, your purse. I was just going to say, what does your daddy do? <laughs> All right. Yes, Ava? When I came from home, from home from school and I saw my mailbox card and I had now. <laughs> okay. Yes, Catherine? Um, when Eva had a birthday party. When Eva had a birthday party. Eva had a birthday party. You were surprised. Or she was surprised. She was surprised. Well, sometimes surprises are good, and sometimes surprises are bad. Like, would you be surprised right now if I had a balloon? Yes. Why would you be surprised? Because it's a balloon. Because it's a balloon? Well, 
Right? <laughs> Would you be surprised if I blew up this balloon? Yes. 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 Oh my gosh, this is a lot. <laughs> Who wants the balloon? Yes. Right? You'd be surprised if I gave you a balloon, but what if, oh, it didn't work. Did that surprise you? Yes. Were you was it a good surprise? No. Yes. No? Yes. What if I said, boom? <laughs> Right? Then you would really be surprised. Well, sometimes surprises are scary, but sometimes surprises are good. Right? Like, I am always surprised, delightfully, when you bring me chocolate. <laughs> Wait, but you're yeah. asking us to. So. <laughs> That's it. That is the adult manipulation surprise. <laughs> good, good pickup. All right, all right. Good, good job. Well, let me tell you about the greatest surprise that ever happened. Do you know what the greatest surprise is that has ever happened? Yes, Zoe. When Jesus rose from the dead. When Jesus rose from the dead. Go ahead, Scott. Oh, when all. When some of the disciples went to the tomb and saw he wasn't there. Exactly. Some disciples went to the tomb and saw he wasn't there. And so now here we have Jesus. Right? And do you remember what happened to Jesus? He died on the cross. He died on the cross. So they nailed him to the cross and they pierced his hands, his feet, and his side and placed a crown of thorns. And then what did they do? Yes, Scott? They hung him, and they, and once he was killed, they put him in the tomb. Yes. And um, then when his disciples went there to check on him, because, you know, people check on him, he said, love him. Yes. He wasn't there, and they thought it was a really bad surprise that someone had taken him, but then it turned out to be a good surprise because he was living. Exactly. People check on people who they care about. And they initially thought it was a bad surprise, but they found that it was a good surprise. So they took Jesus and they buried him in the tomb. Now this is a Christmas box, right? They buried him in the tomb. Can you see Jesus in the tomb? Yeah. And I'm going to close this, right? And I want you to think what happened to Jesus. Let's close this box. Can you close it? You want me to close it? Yes. Huh? All right, I'm going to close it. <laughs> no. I'm going to put it back in. Right? <laughs> so now, Jesus is gone. <laughs> Here? No, he's not the box. How about you look there? Look on the door. Come on, look on the door. Where's Jesus? Yo, hold on. You all better ask him. Come on. Hold on. There's no flap. There's no flap. There's no flap. Now you all sound just like the Dowdy disciples. Act surprised. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. What happened to Jesus? He died. He died. And what happened? Look there. He rose again. Now, how did Jesus get there? A person. Yes, Graham? Um, God rose in back. Amen. Hey. Exactly. All of your questions, like there's a flap, there's something. No, God is bigger than Father Mario. All right? <laughs> so that's the greatest surprise. And I want you to tell others about this surprise. That God is good. That God has some awesome powers. He's able to raise us from the dead so that we can live forever and ever and ever with him. Who wants that surprise? Wait, but yes. it's not going to be a surprise to you, she told us. Well, it will be a surprise because, anyway, I'm not going to get into that part today. But some people, when they meet St. Peter at the gates, might just be surprised. <laughs> I hope I'm not one. Please stand.
Turn around and say, the Lord is risen. The Lord is risen. And that's the best surprise ever. And that's the best surprise ever. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to your God, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. Christ is risen. Alleluia. All right, let's not act surprised. Let's try that again. Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen Absolutely. He's risen indeed. Well, Easter has come, but Mary is still weeping. It's a tension in John's gospel that we're not meant to miss. And she reminds us that tension arises in relationships. Some days, there are some wonderful moments. And some days, there are some tearful moments. How many of you know about tension in relationships? But perhaps, more theologically correct, it is a tension about darkness and light. Mary is still in the dark, Easter has come, and there is light. There is tension between joy and sorrow in our world. I wonder, when have you struggled or failed to see the joy of life because we are so caught up in the sorrows of our lives in the world? When have we found ourselves more pessimistic than optimistic, more critical than hopeful? When and how do we find ourselves struggling to see the light at the end of the tunnel? Easter has come, but Mary is still weeping. Perhaps it's the tension between what's before us and what's behind us, between our past, our present, and future, between moving on and looking back. When have we found it hard to move on? What might we still be holding on to? When have we failed to live into the new creation that God has called us to? Are there times we still find ourselves resentful, holding and harboring feelings, griping about a situation that has long passed and we've been called to move on? Might we still be holding on to past hurts and broken dreams, things that cause us tears, and we do not see the good that Jesus is doing through them? Later, when Mary recognizes who Jesus is, he tells her, do not cling to me. Would it be being asked to let go of today that we are still clinging to? It's the difference between celebrating Easter and tears in our eyes. Easter has come, but Mary is still weeping. John wants us to know that it is still dark when she is at the tomb. And so this darkness combined with her tears is a reminder that Mary is still in the dark about the resurrection. She is yet to believe. She was blinded by her tears about who Jesus is. So tearful was Mary that she mistook Jesus for the gardener. When have you been through a dark period and you render Jesus to a status less than one who is able to bring you through? Less than the risen Lord. How often have our tears blinded us to the truth of our God? How often has the sufferings of this world blinded us to the justice and righteousness of God? When have we failed to see God's working in our lives? Because we are so overwhelmed by pain and what's before us. When have we given into fear more than hope? Easter has come, but Mary is still weeping. Perhaps it's the tension between the presence of Christ and the absence of Christ in our lives. Mary weeps because they have taken away her Lord and she does not know where they laid him. She's seeking the living among the dead. When have we removed Christ from our lives? Do we go looking for love and joy and happiness and life in all the wrong places? What kind of tears and struggles might we 
might our children, might our world be experiencing because they've taken away our Jesus. Taken him out of so many places in society. Easter has come, but Mary is still weeping. So Jesus meets her and reminds her that on the first day of the resurrection, God was not dead. He is still alive. Let me wake you up a bit. Just turn to the person next to you and say, God is not dead. God is still alive. Can you say it with a little more oomph? God is still alive. God is still alive. Yes. What does that mean for you and for me? It showed Mary, indeed, all of us, that the conditions of pain and death which can overwhelm us in this life have been conquered through the resurrection of our Lord by our God. We can rise again. We can live again. We can move on and we can get through. That is the Easter hope to which we cling to as Christians. And it is that hope that helps us to respond to the conditions of life that leave us pessimistic and depressed and hopeless. And let's face it, there's been a lot of pessimism in our society lately. Pessimism about the future. But the Christian, dear friends, stands firmly on his, her, their message, the message of Easter, that does not give up on hope. When have you given up on hope? So for those of us who find ourselves living in the tension like Mary between the old and the new, between sorrow and joy, tension in our relationships, tension in the workplace, tension in the church, tension in our homes, you name the tension. If you've ever experienced tension, then the Easter hope is for you and for me. Today is our proclamation of hope. See, we believe that there can and there will be better times. And by God's grace, we work towards making that a reality. We work convinced that the challenges we face can be managed and conquered. That's the hope of Easter. Our tears can be dried. So at the end of the Bible, in that wonderful book of Revelation, the writer declares, there will be no more tears, no more crying, no more sighing, but life everlasting. Where are we in the tension of Easter? Are we still in Good Friday? Or are we living in Easter hope? And what does this Easter hope call us to do? Calls us to do? Three things very quickly. I believe this Easter hope calls us first and foremost to embrace newness and the possibilities of life. Mary was still there in her tears, not yet ready to embrace what was before her. So let the person next to you know it's time to start living again. Are you sure? It's time to start living again. So dry your tears. You see, yes, Mary was encouraged by Jesus to embrace the new, a new reality, a new understanding of Jesus. Don't cling to me, he said. So I want to encourage you this morning. Embrace the new thing that God is doing in our church. Embrace the new thing that God is doing in our lives. Don't let the difficulty of moving on blind you from the new thing that God is doing. Because God is always doing a new thing. Out of a formless void came light, water, dry land. We are told that wolves shall live with the lamb. People will walk through the sea or dry land. And Good Friday collapsed into Easter. And Jesus is raised from the dead. God is always doing a new thing. So what possibilities might God be calling you to embrace? What new thing might God be doing in your life? Let go and let God. Let's put away any griping and complaining about what was and what didn't happen. What up, cut up, shut up, what? Did it. Huh? What up, cut up, shut up, did it. Let's stop looking back and now start looking forward. And who's not on the train? That's their business. Embrace the new possibility. The church 
is going to be doing a new thing. Secondly, this Easter hope reminds us that God cannot be stopped. And since I like your involvement, I want you to turn to the person next to you. Not say it this time, but sing it. Ain't no stopping God now. He's on the move. Right? Uh -huh. That's right. That's what this new hope means. God cannot be stopped. No, the uh... He's on the move. And here is rather hot. <laughs> we see God doing impossible things every day. Easter tells us of the power of God, a God who cannot be stopped. The power of God transformed the death of Jesus into resurrection. It changed the pessimism and fear of Good Friday that gripped the lives of friends of Jesus into the hope of Easter. When you find yourself concerned about God's whereabouts in your life, remember God is on the move. God cannot be stopped. Death could not hold its prey. Jesus, my Savior. The stone could not keep him locked away. Jesus, my Lord. God cannot be stopped. Who needs that reminder today? Who needs to live into that hope? Watch God work in our world. So embrace the newness. Keep in mind that God cannot be stopped. And finally, this Easter hope calls us to tell others about the hope, the hope of Easter. We just share the good news. Go and tell the disciples. So Mary went and ran as the first woman to tell others that Jesus is alive. And she wasn't concerned about the look on their face. No. Do we have the courage and excitement of Mary to share the good news of Jesus with others? The hope of Jesus with others? Let me conclude by saying, when we encounter people who are being battered by the forces of life, who are down and out, we should share our Easter faith and tell of God's presence and power to conquer the things that cannot destroy hope. It is up to us to tell others of God's hope. Tell of God's power to strengthen us and to bring us through. So on this Easter day, as hard as it is in this church, <laughs> I'm going to ask you to recommit yourself as I recommit myself to tell the old, old story, how a Savior came from glory to save a wretch like me. We want to let others know that God cannot be stopped. There are always new possibilities with God. This is not simply a wish for better days. It is a conviction that with God's power and guidance, we can help someone see a better tomorrow. Do you know someone who needs this help right now? Who needs to know that there is a better tomorrow? That new possibilities exist? Share it with them. Help them to see that God is still at work for them. Be a beacon of Easter hope for them. Share with them the central Christian conviction that no matter how awful our Good Friday experiences may be, there will be Easter and there is hope. Share the good news. Share this hope. And so may God then grant you a blessed Easter as we share this hope with others. Christ the Lord is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Amen. Let us stand now and reaffirm that hope. The words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth. All that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally God and Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God from God.
our faith, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, we came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we became incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified and Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again, glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and outside church. We acknowledge one that has up for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <laughs> the prayers of the people for today are Form 2, found on page 385 of the Book of Common Prayer. Bound together in Christ, let us pray with one heart and mind, singing. for God's people throughout the world, for our bishops, Michael and Eugene, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God for a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. <coughs> Please add your own petitions, either silently or aloud. <laughs> Praise God for those in every generation in, the, in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. All these things we lift up to you as we sing. Lord, hear my prayer. Together, most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Having made peace with God, my brothers and sisters in Christ, let us share in peace with each other. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
Good morning, church. Please be seated. I want to welcome all of you on this blessed Easter Sunday. I trust and pray that it is indeed a refreshing experience for you, spiritually edifying and uplifting. I want, of course, to extend birthday greetings to those celebrating birthdays this week. Hannah, celebrating your 12th birthday. Ava and Greg Hester celebrating his... 25th? Yes. <laughs> okay. Anyone else celebrating birthdays that's not included? No? Well, we'll sing happy birthday to them. Easter babies. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. May God bless you always. Any anniversaries? I want to say thank you to everyone who donated lilies to beautify the altar. As usual, it is quite beautiful. I want to say thank you to the Altar Guild for the wonderful and hard work you continue to do, who journeyed with me all throughout this holy week. Please don't forget to sign up for our Junior Dragons Camp. If you're a child or you have family members that you'd like to, you can email Stacy. The information is on page 15 of the bulletin. Also, please keep in your prayers, uh, dear friend, you know we miss that laughter and joy today, John Sparrow, who is in the hospital uh, recuperating. Jay, what's the update? Uh, they're supposed to take the breathing tube out today, so yes, it's looking positive. Okay, so it's looking positive, and as Jay mentioned, I have to go and absolve him of his sins because he was flirting with the nurses <laughs> yesterday. So no, he's back. Here. He's back. <laughs> with that being said, I won't hold us any longer. May you all have a wonderful Easter day. And there are five adult Easter... Six. Well, five, because one is mine. <laughs> right? Six adult Easter eggs outside. Uh, some wonderful gifts in them, so please. So if the kids, after church, if kids could meet me, we're going to go down the Sunday school hallway and meet me. We're not going to go in the rooms, but the kids meet me in the Sunday school hallway um, to hear what your next directions are. And then any grown-ups who want to try to, you know, elbow it out to get one of the six eggs. <laughs> you may it's join worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. All right. Well, happy Easter to all, and may you and your families be forever blessed. Have a wonderful day. Let us continue to walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
the 361, the great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. In your infinite love you made us for yourself and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ your only and eternal son to share our human nature to live and die as one of us to reconcile us to you the God and Father of all he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will a perfect sacrifice for the whole world on the night he was handed over to suffering and death our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. When he given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, Bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever.
your Christ at Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be priests. Hallelujah. God to the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
post-communion prayer, page 365, or rather in your booklet, not the traditional. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for feeding us with holy food. You have united us with Christ and one another. Now send us forth in the power of our spirit, that we may share your love with the world. Amen. Passes understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.